Hey guys, it's Andy here. Um, today we're going to be using the gradient tool in Photoshop to enhance images. Um, it's a very useful tool. I've been using it a lot recently. And um, today we're going to be using it on a certain photograph taken in the Columbia River Gorge. Uh, beautiful area. This is taken at sunrise. Um, as you can tell, the sky is just full of color. But I, I want to bring down the exposure a little bit. It's a little blown out, kind of distracting from the actual, the actual subject, which is, which is this guy right here. So in order to do that, we're going to have to incorporate um, this tool, and I'm going to specifically use it on a curves layer um, because it's, the, in my opinion, that's a very efficient way of decreasing the exposure. You can use the exposure uh, layer, but I prefer to use the actual curves layer. So first off, you want to you know, make a duplicate background copy. So we're going to do that. In order to do that, you obviously just duplicate the background. Um, there's several options you can click and drag to this guy and let go or you can or you can actually just right click and, and press duplicate layer. So we got our background copy ready to go on that. I like making a background copy because you know if you do mess up you can always just kind of erase it and duplicate it again and it's very very useful to do if you are you know mistake mistaken prone like I am. Um, so after you made your background copy we're gonna head and go over this left pane and we're going to scroll down to this little gradient tool, um, which is what we're going to be using. Um, if for some reason it's not highlighted, it's going to be in the same kind of pane as the paint bucket and the 3D material drop tool. Um, so what you want to do is just highlight the gradient tool. Um, you're going to have a little crosshairs whenever you do uh, highlight it. Um, and so these crosshairs are pretty much going to tell you where, uh, where, where in the image you are going to be using the gradient tool. So. We're going to create a curves layer um, and paint it black. But before we paint it black, um, it's very important to, you know, use the curves to where you, you know, and put it, bring it down enough to where the certain part of the image that you're looking at is going to be, you know, where the way you want it. So I'm kind of focusing on this top part of the image, the sky part, maybe a little bit down into the mountains right here. There's a little overexposure in there. If we can, you know, bring this back, we can tell it's, little overexposed over through here not too bad um, so what we're going to do is drop it down a little bit um, and just like I said before focus on the top part of the sky that's probably good right there and then what we're going to do is just kind of collapse that and get it out of the way um, before we use the gradient tool though it's very important to paint this area black so what I'm going to do is press command I which I'm on a Mac so if you're on a Windows uh, you know, it's control I um, and what that does is it will actually automatically paint this curves black so that it's not you know in the image anymore we can actually just uh, be able to apply it to certain parts of the image which is what we're gonna do with a gradient tool so press command I is gonna paint it black um, and then go over here your gradient tool is obviously highlighted still um, and so we're gonna start in the top part of the image um, and what we're gonna do is um, before you, you know, before you do that, make sure your 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 background and your foreground colors are white and black, and that your white is on top because that's important. If you don't, your gradient tool is going to be flipped around so that the exposure is going to start from down here instead of up here. So it's important to have your white selected first on top so that it goes obviously from light to dark. So what we're going to do is hold this and press Shift and screw kind of scroll down. By pressing shift it's allowing me to create an accurate straight line. I know for sure I am not the most accurate human being in the world and this tool is very useful whenever I'm using the gradient tool. Um, so press shift and hold and click and what you're going to do is just kind of drag it down until you feel the appropriate area is and I think it's about right there right above our right above the river there. We're going to let go and what that's done is essentially use the gradient tool, use the curves, and the gradient tool is actually kind of gradually brought it in, hence the term gradient. Um, so what it's, it's going to do is kind of evenly expose and kind of gently bring it down. And as you can tell, there's a humongous difference in, in our, um, not humongous, but a slight difference in our, in our sky. It's a lot more appealing, you know, it's a lot less distracting. Um, again, if you turn it on and off, and if you want to adjust it, um, you can always just double click on the curves and you know adjust it accordingly. Um, if if for some reason you're just not liking that it's it's a little light or a little dark, you can always just kind of play with it. 
Um, I like it right about there. And like, you know, you can always add another adjustment if you want to add some red in there, or maybe add some, add a little more blue or a little more yellow. You know, it really doesn't matter. I don't like going too dramatic though because I like to keep it about right where it was. Um, so we're going to X out of that and, you know, obviously humongous difference. Now, if you're not very satisfied with the way the gradient tool has been laid out, you can always redo it and just, it's the same process. You essentially just do it again. You just click, press shift and hold down. But this time, maybe you want a little more there, a little further, maybe you want a little shorter. Let's go a little further this time, see what it looks like. As you can see, it got a little darker. Um, and I like that actually a little more because it's a little more um, accurate in the way it looked in real life. So um, we're going to apply that. And as you can see, the color starting to come out a little bit. It's a beautiful sunrise, lots of color. And you can always, you know, after this, after using your gradient tool, you can always enhance it by increasing the saturation, you know, increasing the levels, whatever you, you your heart desire. Um, so another part of the image that I certainly wanted to bring out was this area right here, which is where the subject is. This is actually where the, the road actually comes around after this point and kind of goes all the way down. It's a pretty cool little area. So what I'm going to do is actually add another curves layer. Let's get this curves out of the way. Bring it over here. So that, remember, this is our area right here we're kind of focusing on. So we're going to increase the exposure a little bit uh, right about there. And again, we're going to paint the curves black. Make sure your make sure your paintbrush or your your colors rather, um, your foreground colors first in white, and your background color is going to be in black. It's very important. Um, a, a very fast way of you know if it is white and black, a very fast way of switching it. Say if it was black on front is by pressing X, um, and that essentially just toggles it back and forth to black and white. But we always want white first when we're working with the gradient tool. So. We got our curves ready and we want to paint it black, which is again, command I or control I if you're on windows. Um, and that's going to pretty much make it appear as if the curves never happened. So we're going to kind of use the gradient tool again, but we're going to use it at a different angle. We're going to start from the bottom right because I want to be able to kind of make this part of the image stand out a little bit. Traditionally, I would probably not use the gradient tool here. But the way that the haloing effect naturally happened around the, the ridge here, um, light works in mysterious ways, and I'm not sure why it kind of created a halo effect here. But I'm actually going to do that so, because if I were to paint it in using the paintbrush tool, it would look a little weird. It would take a lot of work to get that mask going and around those trees, etc. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to use the gradient tool, start from the bottom right, or maybe a little more, maybe like right here. And I'm going to bring it up to about right here so that just this area right here is, is selected. So again, you want to use click and kind of drag out. This time we're not going to be using the shift because the shift is not as important if you're going from an angle like this. So we're going to go out and be a little more angle like that. And we're going to let go. And as you can see, it added a little bit of exposure. We can toggle this on and off. You can see a little bit. It's not exactly where I wanted it. So I'm going to bring it out a little more. I'm going to bring it out. Probably pull out right there, kind of just it's you want to over exaggerate a little bit because um, it's 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 not going to work exactly you know exactly where you drop it off is not where it's going to stop. So um, you want to I'm going to bring it out a little more maybe to like right there and there we go that's a little better as you can see it's a little a little brighter um, a little a little more enhanced. Um, I like this a lot because you know obviously if we turn this off it's this is what it's like before and this is what it's like after. Uh, a little more, you know, there's a lot more focus on this area of the image. Um, and I didn't get too crazy on the haloing effect over here, which is good. Um, so this is pretty much, you know, my general starting point if, if I want to work with a single image. It's a lot easier than doing an HDR, which is multiple exposures, a long time in the processing. Um, if, if you're not very good at it, this is a great way to just take in a single image and make it the way that you want it to look and have the exposures correct in all areas of the, of the photograph.